Last week we talked about painting from nature, which is what I personally do. Today we're going to talk a little about abstract painting, which is an alternative, I suppose. <clears throat> um, to give you an example, let's start out like this. Say, say I was going to paint this pen. This pen is a constant form. It is there, and if I paint it, I'm painting that form. Um, a cloud, for example, is not a constant form, but it's a constant principle. It's always a cloud, but it's not in this. It's not a, a solid form like that. So painting a, a cloud would still be painting something but it's not a constant form. Abstract painting, there is no form. You look at a Jackson Pollock painting and there's nothing there. It just spatters the paint. So there's no form, there's no subject. And remember we talked about how important the subject is. So that the viewer, the connoisseur, the aficionado can understand what it was that the painter was trying to do. If it's formless, you have no idea. So let me read something from the early Chinese text about this. <clears throat> now I can't pronounce this person's name because I don't want to get it wrong. It's a, I'll spell it for you. S -U S-H-I-H. -H. He painted from uh, 1037 to 1101. <clears throat> it's a long time ago to have said this. And this is what he said. Once I discussed painting, I said to that, that man and animals and buildings and utensils all have constant forms. As for mountains, trees, waters, and clouds, although they lack constant forms, they have constant principles. If constant form is lost, everyone knows it. When constant principle is inappropriate, even connoisseurs may not realize it. Therefore, all those who are able to deceive the world for the sake of a reputation are sure to make use of what is without constant form. What he's saying is the, the fakers are going to use no form because you don't know what it is so they can fake it and fool you if they put a form down then you can then you'll be able to look at it and decide whether they were good painters or not do you follow what i'm saying here it's 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 important that we have this this um form something that a uh, subject of some kind to have no subject It's it's uh, it's false painting. That's how people can fool you. Now take Jackson Pollock, who spattered paintings around. His paintings, uh, incidentally, um, in nineteen no in two thousand six, one of his paintings sold for one hundred and forty nine million dollars. It's a lot of money for a little spattered paint on a canvas with no form. Now how did that happen? Now do you think if, for example, if, if Jackson Pollock was like Van Gogh, unknown his whole life, throwing paint on canvas like uh, Paul Jackson Pollock did with no form, that his painting would be selling for that kind of money today? That somebody would have found it and said, oh this is really valuable because look it's a bunch of spattered paint. I mean, it's impossible. I can't believe that. I, as I told you, when I first saw Van Gogh's work, I could relate to it because I know what he was painting. And that's what made me a connoisseur of his paintings. But you look at a Jackson Pollock, you know, there's nothing there. I mean, we've seen animals, elephants and dogs and cats and so on, as novelties painting abstract paintings because there's no subject. They just throw paint on them. So you see what's happened to the American? This is calm art. 
Commodity art. Jackson Pollock's paintings have been turned into commodities because someone has backed it, someone has pushed it, someone has decided, I'm going to make these paintings valuable by talking about it and creating all this big aura around it that, so that people will buy it. And then once they buy it, they've spent a lot of money, they're going to keep buying it and selling it and they're going to keep pushing it. We'll see if his paintings are around a thousand years per day like this other this Chinese person I was just talking about a thousand years, two thousand years ago. Let's see if Jackson Pollock's paintings are around a thousand years from now. With no subject. And nobody to keep blowing hot air about it. I have very doubt very much. I'm going to read something else here from this early Chinese text. This is by a, a man named K.U. K-A-I dash C-H I-H, however that's pronounced. And he worked from between 345 and 406. They never did pin it down. This is what he said. Beauty of form, exactness of calculation of scale, discrimination of yin and yang, and refinements of brushwork. All these are valued by the world. When a painter has divine principles within the mind and hands in accordance with the eye, a profound appreciation of his work will not then depend on verbal interpretations. If this were not so, one would truly be cut off from the understanding of another's mind. In other words, if 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 you couldn't understand what he was painting, it would you you wouldn't be able to. It wouldn't get into your mind. You couldn't get your mind around it. Um, one should not be deluded by a mass of critical writings. Those who depend on biased views to simulate understanding do not value thorough knowledge. Now that was written 2,000 years ago. Or almost 2,000 years ago. Do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? If you want to be a painter, if you want to devote your life to art and you want to be a painter, you better know what it, it's really about what you're getting into. If you want to follow some trend and you want to follow the money trail, you're going to waste your life as an artist. But that's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to do, how to paint, or what to paint. That's up to you. If you want to waste your life, go ahead. And if you don't think you're wasting your life, study it a little bit. Look at it. Find out what art is about. And you'll find out that you've been duped if you think that all this abstract stuff and everything that's being sold for a lot of money today has real value. And if that really matters, it doesn't matter what if it's got value today or not. Money-wise, it's your job, if you're an artist, is to, to paint, understand what it is, and you're devoting your life to it. You're not going to... Th don't throw your life away devoting it to some silliness. Devote it and understand. I mean, you constantly have to understand and look and read and, and try to figure out what it is you're doing. Think about it. Think of what art is. And don't worry about whether it's going to be acceptable by the rest of the world at this point in time. Think of it in the long term. Okay, that's all for today. Go to my website, send me an email, and I'll see you next week.